little bit. Do another 50. I don't want to pass it over on fire either. Roger. Bridge nav. Five zero meters bearing one five zero. Thank you. Welcome to our viewer, viewers, just tuning in. Yeah. Feel free to send your questions in the chat. I guess those white ones that we were seeing yesterday are on the hit list. I didn't know that yesterday at all. The white what? The white anemones. Yeah. Oh. oh. A whip. Ooh, where's wow, the, that thing is long. I was going to say, where's <laughs> the end of it? Oh, oh. oh. there's the end. <laughs> Dang it. It's just a stop. Let's see if we can see the scales. Yeah, this is the same one we saw. Yeah, Steve, or same kind Steve of don't, tell any, don't say anything. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna try to figure this one out ourselves. Hold on. I, I got to go back up in the chat to where Steve told us what the <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I'm not telling you what I remember. Okay. Can I zoom in there, Dave? Bamboo. Yes. Yep. Nailed it. I finally am the positive, you guys. <laughs> nice shot, Jake. This is, um, All right, come come on. Nice shot. That was quite the exercise in follow focus. <laughs> yeah, I give you, you I give you a hard one. <laughs> oh, way way to go to keep it in the frame. Nice flying. Yeah, that's awesome. up a little bit more before watch change yeah i think there's a 50 meter move in right now we haven't okay. felt it yet so just keep moving yeah so we'll just keep on i'll still keep like a 10 meter delta though 10 to 12. Oh, okay so we're kind of at the end of your leash there you can All keep right. looking around just we're going to be going through a shift change here thank you again to all of you who have been tuning in and watching the feed and take a few minutes for the next shift to get caught up and ready to answer your questions again. Hello, my friend. Arabic switch change.
Um, I want to call a move in just to keep us moving. Um, okay. Same did direction we've been going. Uh, did you get a sense that uh, there's trouble with starting and stopping or anything like that? Um, uh, I don't think so. Okay. Um, but we do have uh, just the opposing forces. I'm looking out for the current. If we are going to go off, we're going to be pushed to the north, um, northeast. Okay. Yeah. Um, yep, go for it. If I'm Great. not able to keep up, I'll just let you know when we can stop. I think we'll be okay. It'll be a short move. Okay. Bridge, nav. Can we move 50 meters bearing 150? Yep, 0 0.2 knots. We expect to get to the top of the sky. <clears throat> Hello to all our viewers. As you probably just heard, we just did a watch change. So we've got our 12 to 4 watch uh, back on it. So we're just kind of getting settled in. Um, but thanks for listening in. This is our second dive of the expedition. This is our last cruise of our yeah, expedition you're a quiet. season. Yeah. Yeah. Where the fuck is Argus? Over. Well, I mean, it's starting to, I can see it rounding out already. So I think we're good. We're all good. Because uh, I'm looking at the sonar just saying, yeah, okay, it's flattening out a little bit. So. Well, but yeah, yeah, really steep. Like if, if it's a vertical wall, obviously you're going to wait until you kind of have it like starting to relief a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's starting to fall away right away. So I think we're all good. Not, nothing to change. So if you're just tuning in, we are continuing to explore the flank of an unnamed seamount. We are now on seamount G. Our last dive was exploring unnamed seamount C. Um, and we've been going up a 7.9 kilometer transect. Um, so similar to our last dive, but on a new seamount. So I think we'll start off with some introductions so you can get to know who's on watch. I'll start in the back row. Um, my name is Kelly. I'm sitting in our science communication seat. Um, encourage you to send in any questions you have um, as we're diving today. And then I'm going to pass it over to Steve, our watch lead. Hello, everyone. Uh, Steve Oskovich here. I'm the watch lead and science manager on this cruise. Um, we're excited to be coming back down to the seafloor after a brief transit, uh, exploring this new seamount, again, never before explored. So we'll see what we see over the next two, four hours or so. But it's been pretty prolific so far. We've had pretty amazing samples collected so far. Um, to my right, I have. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ashley Mickens. I'm a master's student at the University of Victoria and filling in the data logger and ocean science intern role here on board. Thanks, Steve and Ashley. Do you want to do intros in the front row? We can start maybe with Video Steve. Hi, this is Video Steve, <laughs> sitting in the video chair for the 12 to 4 watch. And hey, I'm Josh Chernov. I'm the Argus pilot on this watch. Gabby, Herc, Kate, Nav. Thanks, everyone. 
Someone asked us which, uh, what our shift name was. Yesterday we were Vancouver Island. Apparently <laughs> the shift between us has been named the Bamboo Shift. So people are getting names. We'll see if we have any developments on that after today. <laughs> Can we be like Vermont to Vancouver or something? <laughs> oh, that's Ooh. good. I like that. <laughs> It does seem a little unfair for the people who aren't living in the Northwest to be the Vancouver Island shift. <laughs> the Steves. The the Steve. Steve. <laughs> Vancouver Island and the Steves. And the maybe. Eastern Steves. <laughs> and the Eastern Steves. There we go. Oh, That's a I bad like name that. right there. <laughs> I, I really like that. <laughs> oh, uh, well, not quite, but I was going to say if everyone does live on Vancouver Island, I bet you probably. Two-thirds of us probably live on islands, though. Oh, interesting. Anyone not live on an island? I, I do not, not live on an island. I do not live on an I island. I do not live on an island. But I spend a lot of time on nearby islands. <laughs> so. You, could, you can be an islander. What's Sometimes. your nearby island of choice? Me? Yeah. I spend a lot of time in the San Juan Islands, oh, which is very nice. close to Vancouver Island. So. Oh, that's awesome. There's an island, like a little sandbar on the river by my house that I live in. <laughs> I know that sandbar, actually. It's a nice sandbar. I don't think you know this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a secret spot. It's okay. A sandbar down by the river. I love it. It's not one of the Connecticut ones? No. The West River. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, we've got some watchers from Vancouver Island. That's fun. So, Science Steve, do you have any intel for those of us who weren't watching the watch before, me, um, on the samples that we've collected so far? Yeah, I can give you my recollection from what I've been watching since about 9 o'clock this morning. Um, so we got on bottom sometime around 7, local. Um, we did collect uh, a few, probably a couple rocks so far. Yeah, two rocks so far. Yeah. We got a couple of Niskin water samples as well with those. Uh, a fair bit of biology from sea cucumbers. Uh, what else? Yeah, we got some trash in there. Uh, worms. They wo wood. Yeah, urchin. Yeah. Argus is yeah. just bouncing around. I think it has to do it with does. her. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Ship's Diversity. position. Yeah, down the slope or whatever. Yeah. Herc, yeah, Herc's not doing much oh, better. Two push cores too today. Um, Rennie was saying that the DVL kept going in and out, so if we need to, we can switch over to master position source and vehicle marker USBL. We're getting uh -huh. better hits, but yeah. I can. I'll just use the clues I've got right now. Yeah, I think where we are is good. Go for zoom. Very nice Corella Morpharian. There's something down into the, down here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What are you, like a tunicate it, or something? It's a purple orb. A purple, a purple orb. No, oh, no, it's for serious. Do you remember a few years ago, the purple yes, orb? Yes, I, I do. do. Yeah, yeah, I do remember yeah. that. I totally remember the purple orb. This is uh, another one of those. We oh, see them wild. once in a while. Yeah, they're uh What is it, a I tunicate? Think, I think they're pleurobrank. Uh, um, Pleurobranchs, so it's a type of mollusk. Okay. Actually, oh, like no way. Okay, go wide. That's weird. Me yeah, too. there's a highlight video and it's went viral a few years ago off of uh, California that we saw one and yeah, yeah, it turned out to be a new species that um, is being worked up at the Museum of Comparative Zoology. They did some CT scans and stuff on it. It was very bizarre. CT morphology. scans. Yeah. Really. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like something that has a lot Great, of structures yeah. inside of it. It yeah, does it have a, it's a mollusk, some sort of modified Can you move shell? 50 meters Do you know, bearing one five zero. Uh, I have to go back and look. Actually, it's been a few years. Um, and you're a little bit quiet. Are you? Can you speak up?
It does look very similar. I'm looking up that purple orb from years yeah. ago, too. It looks very similar. Popular press articles all over the place. Go for Zoom. <laughs> Last sponge on a stalk, and uh, one of these sea cucumbers we collected last night, they don't really hold up very well, so it's not really the sea cucumber of our choice. If we're okay, go ahead. Not the sea cucumber of our dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Although, we're on these kind of nodule fields, we're also seeing a bunch of uh, demo sponges, these uh, carnivorous sponges, Aspesta pluma. Um, really, really small, fine structures um we sampled a couple on the last cruise and uh i saw something on the last dive about asbestos pluma but maybe it's just an observation Related to the snails for that purple orb. Hmm. And that's just his common name, purple orb. No. Okay. No, plur uh, there's no. There's no common there's, name. I don't that's know just. If there's a common name, yeah. For it's plurobring. not that common, I guess. No, yeah. <laughs> you don't just stumble across purple I'm, orbs at three thousand meters, I guess. <laughs> I mean, we did just. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. It does happen. <laughs> well, now, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a treat when we start treating deep sea exploration as common, uh, yeah, because we're doing yeah. something pretty uncommon uh, if you think about it historically. Oh yeah, just another purple orb. <laughs> it's fine. You don't see those every day, but you see them every few days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A nodule waterfall over there, Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> nodule fall. <laughs> I like that. They kind of falling all down the slope. There. Yeah. We got a little squid in. Uh, I just saw that too. Argus. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. It kind of like floated into view, and then I, oh, yeah, it's I see the edge of it. Yeah. Tilt up a little bit. It's like there it is. teasing oh my us, gosh. you see? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. For those of you watching, we're looking at <laughs> oh. the, the Argus feed uh, on a camera little bit two or on quad, and you can see a little squid kind of bobbing in and out of, oh gosh, look at it. <laughs> so bit. ghostly. It's very ghostly. There it is. Hello. Oh, wow. Ugh. Look at it. It is like ghostly. <gasps> oh, cool. Wow, that's so cool. Very still. It is incredibly still. Especially with those two kind of like dots. It looks like I'm it has sure eyes. What those are. Those are internal. Us. Yeah, or or what? That's cool. Wow. wow. Yes, um, Argus is getting uh getting some <laughs> love here. Yeah. Argus. Oh yeah. <laughs> Argus got a lot of uh FaceTime last cruise too. Oh, you know what it is? Is um I know this thing. Well, we saw one earlier this year. It almost had like Dumbo-ish ears. It's a... Um, Is it a seer toothed? No, I'll I'll get you a name for it. In fact, I just have to f remember what it was. It was no, it's not a not an octopod. It's a a type of squid. A little bit of garbage there. More garbage. I think the last watch picked up a Budweiser can. 
but like a fresh looking one. Nothing. Oh, really? really? Yeah. Oh, kind of weird. I heard somebody say the 90s. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna have a 90s playlist in the lab tonight. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh or what tomorrow are you? morning, rather, actually, not tonight. Gonna be down here for another day. Go for Zoom. Oh, yeah, cup coral. Nice. And a spiky thing? Yeah, they just collected one of those, in fact. Oh. Yeah, the sideroid urchin. Cool. Okay. I have a pencil, pencil urchin. Go wide? Oh, yeah. When you zoom in, you can see that little hub in the middle. This is pretty cool terrain to move around in. All the ledgy bits. Yeah. So the the plan, uh, Nav, did you uh, get the plan kind of from the last watch? I did, but I'm glad that you brought this up because I'm looking forward to hearing your interpretation. Okay. So um, we're kind of going to head up to the contour yet right where that waypoint is and see if it flattens off a bit. Um, if it flattens off a bit where we can travel laterally, we're going to travel yeah, in the northeast direction uh, yeah, or east, more east, whichever one kind of keeps us in contact with the seafloor. Okay. If it's too vertical uh, and we have to move, you know, we're, we're losing the wall, we'll, we'll readjust. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so heading up here and then making our way back over towards waypoint three. And so we can keep ascending the ridge on right. this side. Okay. Yep. Copy. Can you point that out for me once more, Kate? Yeah, absolutely. So we're coming up here um, and we're heading to this point right here that's okay. just been marked. And then yep. we're going to head back over. So running parallel to the waypoints um, I think that's just where the nose took took us um, okay. and where there is more features and but eventually we want to make it so we can regain the ridge on this side and so okay. when we hit this point we'll have to use our senses to figure out how to best kind of get back over to this side of the ridge okay and the Great. distance between those are 400 meters okay we can just follow Herc's nose. All right. Yeah, not not much coral here. Most uh, mostly just unbranched bamboos and sponges. Um, but it's kind of typical what we had seen at the other site as well. Um, but I'm, there's a lot of nodules here that uh Bridge, Nav. this far down deep on the other site. So it's got some really interesting habitat heterogeneity for animals. Um, lots of different patches and things that different types of animals can live in. I do think it's uh, it's one of these squids called a cockard squid. And they actually have uh, two different shaped eyes. Yep. Huh. One that is a larger uh, can eye you that is just up looking. If you get a chance so to plot that out on upwards. high pack, okay. so I can and see where we're heading. Eye that's uh, looks downwards. No way. Yeah. Cockeyed squid. To, I'd have to get a better shot of it, but that's what I suspected is it has the same uh, kind of silhouette. Okay. And I did see, yeah. you know, Okay, so just gradually uphill. Eye shapes on it. Great, thank you. 
Oh, uh, gradually. So gradually downhill. Got it. Okay. We did see one out here um, earlier. Well, not here exactly. A little for, a bit further to the southwest. We were diving south of the monument earlier this summer um, on a cruise to explore the Phoenix Islands uh, around Howland and Baker Island, U.S. territories, Pacific Remote Islands. And we did see a couple of them down this deep. Uh, this was on the Falcor with the Sebastian ROV. Do you think those little like glowing eyes, the glowing orb things we saw, different orbs, I guess, uh, yeah. uh, were the eyes of the squid? Yeah, huh. they kind of are semi-reflective. So that, that's so fascinating to me to have mismatched eyes. Yep. But One. most squids can just shift their eyes. And so it's an interesting. Yeah. I wonder if that, why. They have this really interesting torpedo shape kind of silhouette. That's what made me think of that first. But, you know, it, we do have scientists ashore who are very interested in our uh, squid observations. So we'll often shoot them a, an image and they'll be able to provide some context. Hmm, cool. That's a new one for me, cockeyed squid. There's a lot of different types of strange mollusks in the midwater. There was a bit of press earlier this year from the same cruise where we saw uh, two glass octopus. And oh. uh, they're completely translucent. And you see them up, up in the midwater. That's so cool. Uh, that happened when he changed heading. <clears throat> yeah. He's, they've decided to be nose into the current and then broadside to the wind and the waves, which actually is not too bad. It's actually a little easier on our cable, I think. Because we're, we're not, we're not doing this. We're kind of just like rolling with it a little more. Did we get pulled back a bit? Yeah, the ship slipped back a little ways. Right. But we're catching, we're kind of caught up now. Okay. When you do have some uh, coins in the zoom bank, uh, can <laughs> you zoom in on kind of these nodules to get a better sense of any small things that might be living on them? I'm seeing some sponge skeletons here. Can we do a tight zoom and just kind of scan as you move? Oh, oh sorry. Okay, yeah. Uh, y you want to zoom in on these guys right here? Yeah, no particular place. Okay, go for zoom. I've been noticing some small feather-like uh, stalks, and I wanted to see if those were Aspestapluma carnivorous sponges. Very, very uh, small and pretty thin. I wouldn't expect them to be very abundant, but they are attached to the nodules typically. Oh, wait, here. Is that something? Can you go a little wider? Yep. I see where it is. It's just a little feller. Oh, I lost it. Here. Oh, Thanks. I think I can get it if I. It's just such a tiny little thing. And you're right at the end of your tether, too. So yeah, you're totally. Trying to get tugged a little bit. Understood. Coming down. Thanks. Give you a little more. Where was that guy? You're looking for little white plumey. Yeah. I feel like I saw something that met that description. Can you zoom video? 
Nothing in particular. We, you know, I suspect they'll be pretty evenly distributed okay. through here if they are here. We saw one earlier on one of our zooms. There. Bottom corner. Bottom right. Bottom bottom right, now bottom center. Yeah. That guy? That, that could be something else, actually. I'm not sure what that is. That is very small. I, I'll circle it so that Push all everyone the way can see. Oh, also. wow. Good spot. Not sure what that is. I don't even know if that's living. It could be something like a pteropod shell, too, that's just oh, falling. Oh, okay. Okay. Go wide. But the asbestos pluma colonies are really no bigger than you know, maybe four or five centimeters tops. So they're, and they're practically invisible from okay. uh, a certain altitude. I'll try and keep my eye out, but yeah, totally. it's kind of just one of these op opportunistic things. I'll be, I'm back on SPL. I just wanted to take, see if I could see what was going on with the ship for a little bit. Yeah. Since we're hanging out. What's his move speed, like his input move speed? Uh, 0 0.2. Thanks. And we're staying pretty good on it. Yeah. Awesome. Where are these nodule waterfalls here? Yeah, these are neat. Steve, I've got a question for you about these nodules. Sure. Why are they so consistent in size? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, oh, you know what? Uh, who had a really good answer for this, and I completely forgot what it was, was uh, a US geologi USGS geologist, uh, scientist ashore from last cruise. I'll try and pull up the chat, actually. I can do a search and find her answer. Ooh, that'd be great. And I'll be able to better answer your question. Thank you. As long as the chat wasn't wiped between the last cruise and this cruise. Bobby, I don't know if you noticed, but we've got quite a bit of difference between your USBL hits and the DVL. I can do a reset. Sure. Okay. Keep an eye on that. I think we're more over here. I should have done. It's pretty persuasive. <laughs> Twenty meter offset. Yeah. I think we're more like right here. I should have okay. done a um. Yeah, do, do it. Mouse click. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Um, uh, I'm 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 gonna have to go a bit too far back into the chat, so I'm yeah, not gonna no. get lost down that rabbit hole. But <laughs> no um, you know, rather than give a wrong answer, I'm gonna just say I'll leave this one for the geologist to write up a good answer. Yeah, we'll come back to you to our viewer.
happy with that. Tuna kept blowing in the breeze. Not seeing a lot. Or maybe it's just Lots of these traces of uh, these limpets that we... Is that had. the black? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Basically sediment scoured away. I'm guessing these... Uh, these uh, limpets are probably deposit feeders, so they're eating the organic material that's building up on the uh, rocky surface from the marine snow. Okay. And then it's like scraping. Not scrape a fast process. Yeah. Scraping off part of, or what's causing it to change color? Yeah, they have um, they have a radula, so it's like a, a tooth-like comb. Uh, I've heard it's one of the strongest materials naturally occurring. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. This uh, limpet teeth. Yeah, it's it's really um, pretty durable stuff because, I mean, most all uh, gastropods have uh, this, and I think I think all of them do. Uh, they use their radula to rasp at surfaces and usually graze off, um, typically algae and things like in the shallow water. But here it could be sediments or um, small you know, epifauna, uh, small animals that live on the outside of rocks around the outside of things. Hmm. Other groups of mollusks have similar features um, to what the radula does. Uh, bivalves, for example, uh, have a, a style that grinds up food uh, that they ingest. There's more, it looks like. Huh. It's very cool. The uh, USB hits are getting a little bit more centered. Yeah. It's kind of nice. Uh, ship's holding position really well. I'm just doing a little bit of a pause so we can reduce the layback. Okay. I'll get another move in probably when I'm done with this sentence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Our next uh, our next rock sampling depth for the front row is not for a little bit yet, uh, but it's somewhere around 2,900 meters. And if you can find a rock exactly at 2,932 <laughs> meters, <laughs> I think we win the game. Okay, that, I'm, I'm all about that. Yeah, yeah. I like winning games. So. <laughs> 2,932. Yes. Yep. Okay. Can you uh, nav me a rock? <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is 2932. You might as well just put a waypoint on that. <laughs> because we're going to get there. Give me a goal and I will achieve. <laughs> Front row is so easily lured by little carrots. Eh? Like it's <laughs> Ooh, a rock? Ooh, Do I get challenge. to beat the other people? <laughs> Can I get a bigger rock than the last watch? Oh, I love it. I know they got a pretty big one last time. Listen, how uh, big? <laughs> Uh, let's not let's not go there. It's all downhill. <laughs> it's all downhill from there. <laughs> last uh, last cruise, I had to break out the icy hot patch for my back, lifting all those <laughs> boulders. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> Did you lift every one of those eight hundred and eighty no. pounds? Oh, okay. okay. But you know, it looks so easy when a giant hydraulic <laughs> arm picks it up. Uh, Actually, that one, the couple really big ones, like 50 pounds plus, like, you can see the vehicle react. It actually looks like it's trying Bridge, pretty hard. Nav. 50 meters, a 150. Lot of to have a, on the end of a very, you know, relatively thin, Thank you. long appendage. Yeah. What, what would be the, the human comparison if you were to pick up, I don't know, 
That's a lot of ratios. Okay, yeah. what's the arm? Arm can lift up nine nine hundred pounds or something. No, like not that much. Uh, probably like one fifty ish, two hundred is probably its limit. Oh. So but it's about like it's about like that's like three three humans basically doing like lifting their airport luggage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it can Lip. also pick up an egg without crushing it, so it's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty pilot dependent. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the pilot test? <laughs> I cannot pick up an egg without crushing it. Oh, you could do it. There's a little coral. I don't know. We did that a couple of years ago with, uh, we're practicing with Jessica Sandoval's uh, suction cups she built. Um, and we did a demonstration on deck with them. So the challenge, you could easily do it with a suction cup, but, and you could do it without it, but it was a lot harder. Maybe Chef Alex will donate some eggs. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to watch that. Herc pick up an egg. Josh, have you ever picked up anything 150 to 200 pounds? Uh, yes. What did you collect? A lot of it, uh, we do a lot of, um, we, when we do work with Ocean Networks Canada, we do a lot of uh, engineering dives and we're installing equipment and uh, and recovering equipment from the seafloor, a variety of cameras, frames, sensors, all kinds of things. And some of them get pretty heavy. So um, we've taken down, I know for sure, I've picked up things that are well over 100 pounds. Uh, and either put them on the vehicle's front porch or move them for recoveries, put floats on them to bring them to the surface, uh, things like that. So, yeah. Gotcha. Definitely pick up some heavy, heavy things. Hmm. Sometimes we give the heavy lifts to the magnum arm. Yeah, the, yeah, that uh, IAC magnum, the one on the port side, is quite strong. So it's good for holding onto things, and you can lock the jaw out hydraulically and uh, so it's great for when you're taking sensitive equipment you don't want to let go of especially when you're launching and recovering through the interface or it can get a little little rough then um, holds on very well to things. Seeing a couple corals now which we didn't see for the first like half hour. Yeah we, just in the past couple of minutes we saw some bamboo corals uh, unbranched bamboo corals and then this looks like the base, base of a coral here, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I feel like I'm looking at a different video because I did not see any of these corals. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some sponge skeletons. <laughs> some of them are like completely translucent. I think this is just a sponge skeleton. Go for zoom video. Oh, yeah. That's a living sponge, I think. Underneath the rock there? Oh, no. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It could be just like mucusy. Yeah. yeah. Mucus. Goopy. Thanks, video. Uh, the last group was looking at some of these um, mucus. I don't know houses or something, something that lives in there, potentially an egg case or something. Uh, they're persistent. They stay around forever. Don't know what makes them, but I see them once in a while. Usually all fouled up with uh, sediment, marine snow accumulated over the years. And we don't know what makes them? Mystery mucus houses? Yeah. Really? <laughs> don't know. And they last forever? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. I mean, the ocean's so proficient at breaking things down. Like, it's pretty amazing that the mucus <laughs> can stay around for a long Everything time. Everything we put in it, it breaks down. For sure. I mean, if I was a deep-sea animal, I wouldn't want to go touching anyone's mucus house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, guess. I guess so. A good point. A good point. Uh. <laughs> Keep your mucus to yourself. <laughs> 
Uh, actually, that's a, um, yeah, unfortunately, in the world we live in, uh, in the deep sea here, mucus is actually super nutritious, uh, especially in kind of its carbon poor environments, you know, organic carbon poor. So mucus could be a food group down here. Hmm. Mm. A lot of animals like corals and um, maybe not so much sponges, but definitely corals will shed, um, you know, mucusy layers to remove sediment and build up over time. But there's clearly an organism that makes those houses. I'm not sure uh, what that could be. Maybe it could be a fish or something like that. Have we ever collected any of those? No. Not yet. I'm not sure how it would come out. Sea cucumber? cucumber? Yeah. What are these fringy bits hanging off the bottom of this rock? Oh no, it's just rock. It's just a trick of the light. Hmm. Yeah, this is the little python thing that uh, Tim made the other day just to capture the higher frequency data. So it updates much faster than that one does. Can't remember what he said. I think we were shooting for 10 hertz. I'm not sure if he got that fast. But. But it's kind of cool because we're now that it, we're logging this uh, the tension every hour, then I can see where all the peaks are. So we did spike over fifteen thousand once. So looks a little lower than yesterday, but we didn't go quite as deep. So makes sense. And the weather stayed roughly the same. One thing that's really different from yesterday are these. Uh, I never saw extensive nodule fields like we had been seeing and on the slopes too you know these are not gentle slopes these are pretty appreciable slopes so we're doing like a opposite flank right like we're doing a to compare to the other uh seamount we did is that right yeah we're going on the, the northwest the northwest side yeah. yeah the other day we were on the kind of east side ish there's some more cylindrical pieces here that aren't yeah, that odd look shaped like for sure. Typical nodules. Irregular. A word I learned last night to describe rocks. Irregular. Irregular? Mm -hmm. I like that. Apparently there's a whole rock vocabulary that I wasn't aware of until this cruise. <laughs> it's like <laughs> tasting notes for wines or something. <laughs> they do that too, apparently. Taste the rocks? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that from my Geology 101 yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like. I have yet to do that, though. I'm not brave enough. You haven't tasted the rocks? I have not tasted a rock yet. On purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Probably guess a most that came out of the ocean might be salty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good observation. I think I remember that being the tasting note you were looking for. Like, if it tasted salty, it was like oh. one thing. Or metallic. I can imagine that would be a taste that you'd get. <laughs> Radioactive. <laughs> <laughs> Rat row. <laughs> Is that a flavor? <laughs> Extra. Uh. We'll never know. <laughs> No, we have that whole box of depleted uranium downstairs. Mm. Not 
sure I like that silence after that. <laughs> no one knows how to respond to that. not a conversation for us, Bill. <laughs> Go back to our rock tasting notes quickly. <laughs> That's quite a diversion. We took. <laughs> All right, sea cucumber. Go for zoom. Yeah, I've never seen, uh, if these are, you know, mm. largely nodules, I've never seen kind of the many odd shaped ones, you know, long and uh, spherical. You can zoom a little more. Oh yeah, the... The long nice. tubey ones. Yep. Okay, go ahead. We did, we did sample at least a couple sea cucumbers so far. Bridge, Nav. We're kind of looking for the ones that look more like 50 meters bearing 150. So they have those very prominent walking legs. Thank you. Not so much the tongue-shaped ones. Did you all hear they saw a whale underneath Nautilus when they were launching yeah, was Argus like, on the first dive? Yeah. They saw a whale? Pilot whale. Oh. That's why cool. they kept telling us to slow down, but we didn't know. They're like, slow down, slow down, slow down when we were, when we were going down the first 50. Right now <laughs> on the surface? On the first dive when we launched, there was a pilot whale under the ship. Oh, yeah. And they saw it with Argus. And I didn't know why they kept asking us to slow down. I thought there was something wrong, but they didn't say, like, there's oh, a, there's a whale under the I ship. know what you're talking about. Yeah. Last last cruise, we had a fair number of whales. We did. Yeah. Fin whales. Oh, you saw fin whales? Yep. Cool. Quite a few. I saw a humpback whale on the way out of Honolulu. It did like one quick breach, and then I went down to find other people, and it never came back. Wow. <laughs> But it was exciting. And it's that time where humpbacks are migrating down here. Or finally making it here from Alaska. Things like bamboo corals, and very, very sparse Chrysogorgia corals are the only ones we're seeing here. And they're really only on these harder more in place, rocky outcrops, ledges. Kind of shows you that for things that grow big and large and slow, like corals, these nodules don't really provide a lot of substrate, but some of some species actually will live on things like nodules, sponges as well. All sorts of in fauna live in and around the nodules. I feel like we've had a pretty steady current from the southwest this whole time. Southwest? Yep. Some barnacles on this. Yeah, Go for zoom. Stock. Okay, and a, few a little, here, yeah, there's a bunch of things growing on that. Bunch stock and uh, solitary hydroids. Or maybe oh, anemones. Oh, cool. Uh, 
Or actually, those might be... Uh, can't tell what those things. I think they're anemones, actually. Neat. Okay, go ahead. Anemones and barnacles on a stalk. 